Welcome everyone to this session we have today, GN. Uh, we are going to be presenting the EDI guidelines and uh, we are, are going to be here uh, for one hour with quite a lot of content. So this is what's going to happen today. We are going to go through the document with a short overview uh, of it and the guidelines which are uh, included. And then we are going to have a discussion roundtable with uh, Viv, Judith and Karina who have been involved in the production of this uh, lovely document. And then we open the floor to everyone and discuss and think about what com we can do next, uh, the practicability of these guidelines and, and future research we want to do in terms of EDI. So just a bit of the context of the program, uh, considering the context of the background of GoGN. So we are an open uh, research community and we understand it's a priority for us to be more diverse, equitable, and inclusive. For that reason, this project was uh, created a few years ago uh, to explore how to integrate uh, those uh, principles in GoGN. And it included two phases, which uh, was phase one with the support of Judith in Africa uh, to explore and start to understand the context. And the second phase was built on that uh, first phase. And in that case, with the support of Vivian, in uh, Latin America. This was all coordinated by Karina. And then the third uh, um, phase or implementation phase, we uh, consider the, as an opportunity to uh, implement some of those recommendations. We realized probably it was the time to reflect and think about what to do with the work that has already been done and uh, produce a handbook. The handbook is a live document. We are gonna see it now that uh, we will continue working on it. And, and contains a set of uh, guidelines and recommendations from this experience so far. So just to uh, summarize a bit what was done in the first two phases uh, for the audience. So the first uh, one in Africa included uh, interviews with nine key stakeholders and members of the network uh, in the African context. Um, all the data was analyzed through thematic analysis and as well, it included today's face-to-face -face workshop with experts in uh, OERs, which were help and uh, was supported by the interview and analysis made from the interviews, including participants from Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Egypt, and Rwanda. Then the second phase, which a particular focus on Latin America, in that case, 12 key stakeholders were interviewed, including GoGM members, and as well, uh, a similar approach uh, in, uh, working with the with data using uh, software such as Nvivo help to understand and analyze that uh, context in Latin America. That includes as well an online workshop with experts in OER to validate and get more uh, information from participants. In this case, uh, people involved were from Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Peru, and Uruguay. And I hand it over to Karina. Thanks, Paco. So yeah, so then we had these two phases uh, where I had the opportunity and the privilege to work with these two, three amazing people now, like Judith, and Vivian, and Paco. And then Paco and I, we initially thought of a colleague pro project program, which was a mentoring program also a recommendation of you know uh, uh, the research uh, under, undertaken but uh, for all the reasons that are included in the in the guidelines uh, that idea didn't progress so we decided to then put together uh, the context uh, 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 the findings from the two different phases and then come up with some guiding principles. So these are all based on the data we collected and analyzed. And the guidelines then are divided in three, three different categories, put it this way. Uh, so there were recommendations, even though the initial aim of the guidelines were for GoGN only, because it, it, our, all our questions were uh, mostly directly to, you know, uh, uh, the questions used during the interviews were based on 
go GN? What could we do to, uh, 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 um, you know, improve go GN in terms of EDI principles? The, the data we received was very rich, and then we could split the recommendations uh, uh, for in three different categories for higher education institutions, for go GN, or similar uh, organizations that work, you know, uh, uh, community based organizations, for example, and also for individu individual practitioners. We also included there some uh, definitions. Uh, which was important uh, uh, to understand the context of EGI in different places. So we put also what we found, but also what is in the literature in terms of EGI and also the new types of definitions there. Um, we do specifically then provide information about the two phases, which Paco already covered some of that. And in the conclusion, we also cover some of the principles, some of the uh, mission of GoGN, um, and, and uh, some of the things that have already been done, including the fellowship a program that Paco led last year. Okay. So this is what is in the document. Paco, can I change? Ah. So this, we decided to put some of that in here. So this is, this is what GoGN mission already is. And these are, some of that were already in place. Some of that were based on uh, uh, findings of, uh, of these two phases, from these two phases. Um, and some of that we are already implementing. Um, and we believe that, you know, the more we use them, the more we are familiar with these principles, we um, will we'll, we'll meet, meet them and we will improve them. So some of them to create an environment in which individual differences and contributions are recognized and valued. So this can be done through the research we are doing uh, in the EDI uh, project, for example, uh, uh, but also by using the guideline open license there, we believe that this is going to improve, be uh, contextualized and uh, um, adapted accordingly. And some of them are already in place, like the open research community. We already have uh, the capacity building that we provide to uh, st uh, PhD students engaged in the scheme, including those in, in the global uh, south, the scholarship that was provided for people to uh, come and join us for the uh, conferences, um, and also the fellowship that has been uh, um, happening in the last couple of years. So I'm not going through the details, but I, this is just an overview of some of the existing already uh, uh, principles of GoGN and some and some that we are and how we are working uh, uh, towards EDI in GoGN. What's the next? Next. Yeah, next we are actually gonna be talking together. Yes. And I'll be chairing, but it's flexible, friendly, so no worries. And I'm going to invite uh, Beep, Judith, and Karina uh, to discuss uh, four key aspects uh, for today. So first, to introduce themselves and the context uh, of the research involved uh, with DDI, uh, what do you think of the guidelines, how do you see them being used, and are there any areas for improvement, additions for the research that you can consider and we can uh, discuss together as well? Uh, Bip, please, if you are happy to start. Sure. Uh, so uh, good afternoon or good morning, depending on who you are. Uh, I cannot see everybody who's on. Uh, anyway, I was responsible for conducting the research uh, with, together with Karina here in Latin America. And we went through, I'm not going to call them phases, but two steps. Uh, during the first one, we interviewed uh, individually the stakeholders uh, of Latin America. We had people from Mexico, from Argentina, from Brazil, 
uh, from Colombia. My mind is not too sharp today, so uh, uh, Karin, if you want, <laughs> jump in. Uh, but we managed to get uh, from Chile as well. Um, we had a couple more from Brazil. Uh, we had at least uh, three participants. So during the first phase, oops, excuse me. So during the first step, uh, it was an in individual uh, interviews, gathered the data, and we asked, uh, based on questions that already been used prior, we adapted them uh, to be used for the, uh, Latin America context. The data was analyzed. And during the second step of the research, uh, what we did was, this was during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic, so uh, we couldn't do any face-to-face -face, uh, gatherings, unfortunately. So we held a workshop, um, an online workshop, and during this online workshop, basically what we did was um, we validated uh, the data that we had gathered, and we got more data, we managed to get some more data um, from the participants. So it was very rich uh, in general. We got very good responses. And I think uh, one thing that stands out, stood out a lot and stands out a lot is how, um, I'm gonna speak of the Latin America context, but I think this goes for the global South as a whole, um, how they, do not consider them themselves as being part of the global north. They feel like they're kind of put aside. So they already do a lot of research on their own and they participate in projects. So that's one point. Second point is that naturally there is a language barrier. Uh, and that was an important uh, thing that came up from the guidelines uh, because uh, with with thankfully, with the help of uh, Paco, uh, we managed to translate um, all the findings into English, Portuguese, and Spanish. And of course, uh, more people, you have more people speaking Spanish than you do Portuguese, right? Portuguese mainly spoken here in Brazil and uh, in Angola, but besides that, not too many. So it really helps. Uh, so I think that's a very uh, useful thing that came out of the guidelines uh, is making this material more accessible, is helping uh, young or early career researchers uh, become more aware that the GoGN network um, exists and helping them. For example, if they're going to submit some research, if they want to attend a conference, uh, giving them some kind of mentoring um, to be able to do that. Uh, and if they don't speak any English, of course, it would be very helpful if one of us, uh, you know, could function as a translator and accompany them during, now that all the events have gone face to face, right? Uh, we also have a, a GoGM participant who is from Uruguay. And she also participated uh, in the study. And uh, she also has some problems with English, although she managed to speak English quite well. Uh, so I think that what came from the data, as far as the guidelines are concerned, uh, is very useful. I think we're pretty useful to show us um, this thing, of, for example, if you publish something and you don't publish it in English, there is no visibility, right? So in order to make it more visible, uh, it has to be translated. So I think that that stems from uh, the data that, that we analyze. Um, so uh, a way uh, a way to make them more aware, and I think that was a step. Uh, start presenting this uh, at universities um, here in Brazil and in other Latin American countries. Uh, a lot of, not a lot, but some participants had never even heard about GoGen. They didn't know what GoGen was before. 
So uh, giving them, uh, maybe replicating them and having people who work at the universities uh, act as mentors and try to bring these people who work with open education, open educational resources on board um, to the GoGN network. So I think that basically covers how you see them being used. Um, I see the guidelines. I think there's a very practical component uh, from the from all the data gathered, uh, and I think that can be easily implemented. Of course, we're still going to face challenges because it's not easy to get uh, mentors uh, that have the time and are willing to put in the effort. And until they really become part of the network and become really engaged in the network, uh, we might face a little bit of hesitancy there. So I think um, uh, the fourth question is, are there any areas for improvement, additions, further research? I think uh, the area for uh, improvement uh, or addition would be uh, we need to get the word out more. You know, we, we have to use all the, you know, the channels available, all kinds of different media available uh, because we already have uh, things translated into other languages. And maybe we need to start going to the institutions and, you know, deliver presentations and things like that uh, so that, you know, you get more people to come on board, more mentors, more early career uh, PhD students, and so on and so forth. So, Thank you very much, Pip. Uh, I'm aware Judith uh, was having some uh, technical problems, but hopefully they are solved. Hello, Judith. Hey, hello, Paco. Yes, I'm, I'm okay now. That's, uh, yeah, perfect sound. Uh, so please, um, if you want to go ahead with your um, opinions and ideas. Yes, Paco, I'm ready. Now, first and foremost, I really want to be, uh, uh, to express here uh, my, my heartfelt and, and impression uh, with the progress of the EDI project. Uh, ideally, you are the first one where this was launched in Africa, and I was the first one uh, in, in that list in terms of finding out and carrying out the necessary, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the necessary survey among so many uh, uh, expertise, and those whom we felt could give us very good input with regards to this uh, equity, the, the diversity and inclusion. And then uh, uh, the progress of the faces that I can see now is, is, is quite promising and it's giving me a lot of hope in the sense that we as the GNS are building up a team of mentors who are providing the necessary information and the necessary resources that can guide higher learning institutions with regards to edu uh, open education and building up on the open education community. Now, uh, uh, what I think of the guidelines is that first and foremost, this is very timely because after the pandemic, there were so many lessons that people learned. After the pandemic, people have changed their modes and ways of, I mean, uh, uh, deliveries in terms of education and people are now running into, into open and online education. Well, I'm talking about for my country, like in Kenya currently now, people we are pushing, the higher education institutions are now pushing on to come up with an open university that is going to help in reducing the cost of education for my people in Kenya. So I see these guidelines very useful and very timely in helping the new uh, career learners and the new researchers to see to it that it is very paramount to research in the area of the open and also to um, promote and lift up their researches and practices of open education. Now, I am very confident that these guidelines will be very useful in the higher education institutions. For instance, I, I went through the, 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 the recommendations that are given to various institutions and to individual researchers. I, I, I'm very hopeful that the recommendations that appear in this guideline will help people in understanding how useful and important and very timely is it for people to start doing their practices and researches in the open. It is helpful and in, in also building up, especially the developing countries 
and institutions where students cannot be able to afford the books, cannot be able to afford the textbook to help them in their studies, and also buy the necessary reading materials at any point at a particular time. So I guess these, uh, uh, the materials in the guidelines are going to govern and it will inform the policy lines in these institutions, especially in my country. We are pushing and I hope that uh, we are going to make good use of these guidelines. And for me, they have come at the right time and I really have, need to uphold the efforts uh, of the GoGN team. Now, areas of improvement, well, as my colleague uh, um, Viv has mentioned, we, we, we see uh, the media and uh, workshops and seminars being very good tools to help us in uplifting and upraising this important information across the globe. Especially for us in Kenya and in East Africa, workshops and seminars that could be done either online or on face-to-face -face basis can help to open up people's mind and also click up on the usefulness of the open education researchers in our region. Now, as the global south, I think the process is, has been very, very, very slow. Uh, but then we are not giving up. We are not giving up. And I think I still mention here that I am very still passionate and very convinced that in the near future, we shall have good numbers that represent the open education uh, community. And I am very, very happy. And I want to commend Karina and Paco for the dedication and commitment towards um, this program, EDI and the progresses that have been uh, uh, that we have seen so far is as a result of the this commitment and building the profile of gojian and of course lifting our profile as gojianers in the sense that we become mentors and those who want to nurture others to nurture young researchers in order to build a stronger and long lasting um, uh, uh, open education community I think, Paco, uh, I'll stop there for now. Thank you very much, Judith. Yeah, very handy. And now, Karina. Wow. What to say of the, these two amazing women? So, I, as you can see, I've been very privileged to work with this, with Judith and Vivian and now Paco. So, so my take on this, is that I feel, so if I answer these questions here, um, based on the, the, the research we've, we've done and, and, and the work, previous works uh, uh, and that we've read about, you know, any guidelines regarding EDI, I think these guidelines in particular are very unique. Um, yes, we have guidelines, EDI guidelines that are uh, workplace focused. Um, some companies have developed their EDI guidelines. Um, others, other guidelines are um, were developed by government, like UK government has some guidance and policies with a general focus. Uh, some work uh, workplace and education. Um, some are actually talks about everything in one document. Um, some university, universities in the UK have EDI policy, policies and guidance, um, including the Open University, which has one that is focused on uh, curriculum. So as you can see, they are, there are guidelines about EDI, regarding EDI um, um, out there available for us to guide us but our guidelines in particular they are you know focus on open education and they are evidence evidence based so based on this context on these regions and uh, uh, on the uh, insights of these experts we then have developed them so I think I think they are quite unique in that sense um, how I see them being used, oh, I think they are, in addition to all the things that Vivian and Judith said, in addition to that, I think they will be, they will be a good addition to what's already there. You know, the pool of guidance available to everyone that is interested in EDI, uh, in particular in open education, this one. Um, I also think that because it is openly licensed, 
it can be adapt, reuse, recontextualized, improved. So this really, I believe that eventually, you know, once this is all released, it will, I think it is already, isn't it, Paco? We have a launch, that's, we have a link. Um, I think it will, it will have a life of its own. And, you know, it will, it will take different shapes and, and forms and will have hopefully a, a positive impact on, on um, open practice, um, you know, every, where is needed. So, but helping at the educational institutions, like you just said, and open practice internationally. So hopefully it will, it will get there. Some areas of improvement. So I think we are all very judgmental of our own, our own work and the work, you know, that is, uh, uh, is starting because I think I see this just a starting point. I see that there is a lot to do and a lot to improve uh, in regards to this. Hopefully we will get a uh, continue getting feedback on, on these guidelines so then uh, uh, we can improve them. I also think that, you know, as people use them, we will get, we will understand the, 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 the importance and the impact of them. But I would like to see, uh, you know, other parts of the world be included. Yes, we have the Latin America, we have Africa, but there is an idea to include uh, um, Asian and other regions that are part of the Global South. And also would like to see it being translated in different languages, not only Portuguese, Spanish, like we did before, but also more broadly. Um, I think that would really improve the reach of uh, these, um, these guidelines. I, th I think that's, that's all from me, Paco. Thanks. That's great. Thank you very much. I think I was thinking about uh, launching some questions to the three of you, but I think it's, it's nicer if we discuss from now all together because because I think we are setting some ideas for improvement and 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 how to use them. I'm I mean I'm really glad your opinion about the guidelines is so good, but uh, as well how to move forward. Uh, that's why I think it's uh, important to to open the the, the floor to anyone else in the room. And let's talk together. And probably what I'm going to do as well is stop sharing the screen so we can see uh, ourselves in kind of more friendly environment and just feel free to use the, the camera if you feel like.